but I'll I'll go through this, and then the um, the video is uh, is an activation that uh, Bill Jorgensen and Jeff Stanford did on the Natchez Trace Parkway back uh, a couple of months ago, and I think you'll see. Uh, as I talk about the way I activate and, the, and you see what they did, you'll see that kind of spans the, the, the range of things. We have different interests and, and it, the program just lends itself to a lot of possibilities. So Parks on the Air is, has, has kind of uh, exploded here lately. Uh, if you tune around on 40 meters on the weekend, uh, you're certainly going to be hard pressed not to stumble across uh, 5, 10, 15 Parks on the Air stations operating. I, I looked just a minute ago and there were 14, I believe, that are operating right now uh, uh, on 40 and 20 meters. Uh, but start with what is Parks on the Air. In 2016, there was a program called National Parks on the Air, and I, I was not aware of that uh, at the time, but it was apparently very successful. And there were a group of the, the hams that had been very active in the National Parks on the Air event that wanted to keep something going. Uh, Jason Johnston, W3AAX, uh, is really the, the, the father of POTA, I guess we, we say, and uh, has really taken this thing to the next level. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of expertise and technical expertise, programming, uh, GIS expertise, lots of volunteers that work on this and uh, that, that have really taken this to the next level. POTA now is not limited to national parks. Uh, many types of state and federally managed properties are eligible, and I'll show a list of those here in, in just a minute, the kinds of things that, that qualify as a park for the Parks on the Air program. Uh, it's gone global. Here, just in the last six months or so, it's gone from being uh, POTA activities in five or six countries. There's at least 27 now, and it is not uncommon at all to set up in a park It'd be called, I, I had four Belgian stations uh, a couple of weeks ago. I was set up at the Cedars 11 and State Park, and I had four stations in a row from Belgium. I don't know if I got on some kind of spotting network over there or what. Uh, it's kind of cool uh, when, you, when you are the DX sometimes. And there are literally thousands now that are of registered participants that enjoy activating and chasing the parks. Um, so, you know, why would you want to do this? And there's lots, of, there's lots of things. And the first one, we talked about field day earlier, field day and portable operations. If you're into that, this is a great way, certainly if you're an activator, uh, to get out and stay sharp on that. Uh, if you look at the Facebook page or you join the Facebook page for Parks on the Air, and, and several people that don't even do Facebook have decided to do it because they felt like they were missing out on so much information. Uh, lots of experimentation with antennas and power sources, radios, QRP, CW, digital modes, all, all, all things uh, are except for, and I'll cover it in a minute, except for land-based repeaters are, are eligible contacts in parks on the air. If you like chasing paper, there's a world of paper out there, and I'll, I'll show some of that. Uh, managing the pileups, uh, it is not uncommon to get uh, a pileup that lasts 15, 20 minutes where it's just overlapping call signs and all you can do is pull out one or two letters here and there and, and you do the best you can. And uh, th those are fun. Those are challenging sometimes, but, but they're, they're, they're fun to do. Uh, a lot of QRP uh, stations out there that go to parks, they can backpack in, they do su summits on the air, they do other things, they have lightweight equipment. This is another way for them to participate uh, there's a lot more entities uh, available to operate QRP from in this program than there are summits, for example. Uh, you can use all bands and modes. You make a lot of friends. It's, it's a lot of fun now. Uh, people call you by name. You know, they call you by call sign. To, they, they give their call sign, but, but you start to know the same people. And uh, so you build a relationship and you're outside. I mean, it's, it's been outstanding uh, to me just to be able to get out and, and be in some of these parks and some of these other entities. Some are not so pretty, but some have just blown me away. Uh, so what's considered a park? I won't list all these, but I'll, I'll leave it up there for just a minute. There are all sorts of, of interesting places. Some of these are just a building um, that makes it challenging sometimes to set up a place to operate. Some are, are entities like the Great Smoky Mountain National Park that spans, you know, quite a few acres, square miles. Um, so all of these have their own challenges. Uh, 
uh, trying to set up and find access points, doing the research for that, I, I think is beneficial. That's a lot of fun for me, uh, plotting out routes to, to spend the day. Where am I going to go? I want to do six parks today. How am I going to how am I going to best utilize my time? Those kind of things. So uh, there's, there's quite a few of those. And I'll say here that I serve as the mapping coordinator for Tennessee and Mississippi. So if, uh, if you get interested in this, get involved, start looking around. If you find an entity that's not shown on the list on the website, let me know and I will vet it and make sure that it meets the, the criteria, which is basically it needs to be on federal or state owned property. Uh, we do have a few that slip through that are not necessarily owned by the state or federal, but uh, they're operated by the state and federal, but no county parks, no city parks, that kind of thing. But if you'll send me something, if you think I've missed one, I'm always happy to look at that. Where is it? I mentioned the countries. I mean, there's there's a list. This is uh, current, I think, as of about two weeks ago. So it's not just the, the, the usual players you'd think of, I guess, uh, you know, some some pretty unique areas there. And you'll see them, they're active. This is just a, a screenshot. I, I always have, I'm always scared of live demos on websites. So I uh, apologize for that. The, uh, the, the site has just tremendous mapping capabilities and information, but just to give you an idea of how many entities, even in our geographic area here are eligible to be activated. And uh, a couple of those are active right now. Uh, I know that uh, there's one out in West Tennessee uh, or on the west side of the screen here that I looked a minute ago and somebody was on that on 40 meters now. Uh, if you zoom into one of these, and I'm going to go to this one. If you can see my, my cursor, it's in College Grove, the Haley Jaqueth Wildlife Management Area. There's not much to it. It's on the side of the highway there at College Grove. There's a red barn there and there's a few hundred acres. Uh, but there's good open property there. You can set up an antenna, you can set up uh, your radio, and, uh, and I've activated this one. I'll show you some stats on that in a bit, but, but uh, over 20 times and made over 1,000 contacts from this location. And just to give you an idea, there's, there's a screenshot of what it looks like in Poland, um, all these other countries. There's just um, lots and lots of, of parks and, and, uh, and lots of participation. Japan has become very active here recently, and so there's typically a Japan station or two that are that are on. So, you know, how do you get involved with this? And, and I would highly recommend that the first thing you do is go to the www.parksontheair.com website and register. And you will see just lots of information. There's a dashboard that comes up. Uh, take some time, go through that, read the frequently asked questions. Um, I think most of your questions will be answered there. And uh, that, the first step is, I, I think that's important if you want to get involved. Facebook group is now over 7,500 members and adding more just constantly. It's a spotting page. Um, there's multiple Slack channels and a lot of helpful information, a lot of helpful people on how to, how to do the activations and the chasing. So um, I think, I, I think I've got another slide later that shows a, a couple of more maybe uh, web addresses on that as well. This is a screenshot. This is not now, but uh, of what the spotting page looks like. And at this particular time, there were three stations across the top. You can see uh, W3LUZ was at a uh, park that's designated Kilo 5473, which is the, I don't know how you say that, Pinchot, Pincho. State Forest in Pennsylvania. He's on 14.315 megahertz. He was spotted by uh, N3RN. And uh, he's also, as a note, that must be a second operator, also on 7.266 megahertz, tells when it was heard. You can go across there. You, and, and again, right now, there's 12, 14, maybe more stations that are active. The bottom of this page shows uh, scheduled activations. This is not something you have to do. In fact, it's not something I've ever done, but a lot of people like to do this, uh, let people know where they're gonna be, particularly if they're gonna be in an area where they don't think they're gonna have cell service and be able to spot themselves later. And so uh, you can see that there were three uh, activations there that were planned, Oregon, Washington, and North Carolina. Uh, there were certainly probably several more that were actually on the air other than that. 
So that's just an example. That that page comes up very nicely on your cell phone. It's pota.us. There's no www or anything like that. Just if you just type in pota.us, you will get the spotting page, and it uh, it comes up very quickly. Okay. <laughs> Now, getting into how you do this a from a practical standpoint, there's two groups within POTA, uh, hunters and activators, or sometimes we call them chasers and activators. And to be a hunter, and this is the way you typically start off, um, you just call the activator. You can go to the spotting page. You may just happen to cross one. Uh, you get in there. You start calling the guy. If he acknowledges you, you're done. Uh, just the spotting page helps you to know, but there's no logging required if you're a hunter. Uh, all logging is the, is the uh, responsibility of the activator. And so the system is gonna take those logs when the activator puts them in. The hunter's gonna get credit for it. Awards, they're generated automatically. You can go to, if you signed up on the website, you can go in and you can see your awards that have been issued. You can see your awards progress uh, towards uh, additional awards. Um, and it's a great way. The hunting is a great way to get used to how the exchange kind of goes. And uh, especially during the pileup, uh, just trying to get into a pileup. You develop some skills there as well. But uh, most people, I think, like to like to hunt for a while. And if you've ever worked a POTA station just by accident, if you just tuned across one and you've heard that and some and you called them and they put you in the log, you, you're in the system now uh, from an award standpoint. So once you register, you can go and you would you would already have credit uh, against your call sign there. The activators, a little more complicated for, the, for those of us that like to get out in the parks. There's a few rules that apply, but there's very few rules. We, we've tried to make this program simple and fun and not, not burden it with a lot of rules. But the, it, the activator and all equipment must be completely located within the boundaries of the park. Uh, that takes some research sometimes. Sometimes a parking area is not necessarily part of the park. Uh, sometimes, um, so for example, Bicentennial Capital Mall, downtown Nashville. Uh, I don't think any of the parking spots around that park are actually part of the park. So you've got to get out of the vehicle. You've got to go set up in the grass, uh, find a park bench. You've got to do something there to, to make it legal. If the entity is a trail or a river, you've got to be within 100 feet of that. A successful activation, for me to get credit as an activator for this activation, I've got to make 10 contacts from that park. And that's during the same Zulu day. So right now, what's that, 6 p.m. to 6 p.m., something like that. Um, so we have, to, uh, we have to do that. But if, if, for example, I only worked five stations, I will still submit my log, and anybody that was a hunter would still get credit for that park. I just would not get credit for it as an activator. It's very rare anymore, as big as the program's gotten, for anybody to do an activation and not get credit for it. Uh, ten, 10 contacts is a pretty low bar anymore. In the earlier days, sometimes it was a, sometimes it was a challenge. Uh, all bands and modes are acceptable, except for your land-based repeaters. Uh, people are making satellite contacts. People are doing a lot of FT8. Um, those types of things, and you know, it's 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 all fair game, and any contact counts. And so, I, I do know from a field day standpoint, there are some I, I've heard combo stations, if that's the right term, where people are doing both parks on the air and field day. They'll go set up in an entity and uh, and and and, and uh, count credit for both, and so. You know, if you get to eight or nine contacts and you, you're having trouble making that last one, nobody's coming back to your CQ, tune around, check into a net, you know, DX, just contest weekends sometimes are, are some of the best. Uh, you can make a lot of contacts on contest weekends and those count toward an activation. So again, we don't want the rules to be terribly burdensome. We want, it, we want it the, the fun in this and the work in this to be actually getting out and playing radio. I apologize for the poor picture. This is my station. Um, I've traded vehicles since then, but everything else looks the same. That's a Wolf River coil uh, on a small tripod with a 17-foot MFJ whip. And you see the coax. I hope you can see it running into the back of the truck. I, I put Most of the time, I'll put my radio just in the passenger seat. 
uh, particularly in bad weather, and that's where I operate from. Uh, I had a ham stick, I think a 20 meter ham stick on the top of the truck at that time too, but uh, but that's that's basically it. I do a little, uh, I've started playing with an NFED just a little bit uh, on some of my activations, but this has been so successful uh, that I really haven't had to worry about doing anything differently. And it's quick to set up. Uh, I can be on the air in about seven minutes and I can, I can tear it down, be on my way to the next park in less than five uh, after doing this so many times. Uh, my station, and, and the reason I'm showing this is that when you see the video and you see uh, what uh, Jeff and Bill did, you're gonna see they, they took a different approach, which is perfectly valid. Uh, I, I do more of rapid operating I got to go set up, get my contacts. Once the pilot kind of thins out, I pack up, I go to the next one. I may work uh, five parks in a day. I've done 11 parks in a day. Um, other people like to go set up and spend all day in a single park and, and certainly anything in between. Some people when they're camping are in a park for two or three days or for a week and they'll set up every night and, and do things. So that there is no right or wrong but I don't power the um, station off of the truck uh, at all. I have a bio-NO 30 amp lifepo battery, 30 amp hour lifepo battery, and uh, that'll get me through a whole day at 100 watts. I I've never had that thing discharge on me to where it caused any problems. My Wolf River coil and my whip, and, and, and that's my station. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy. And, and with that, my call sign is the fourth one there. Uh, this is the, uh, the activator statistics. Uh, just not to brag, but just to show you what you can do with a relatively modest station. I've done 517 uh, activations in 433 unique parks. That's in 14 states. And I made 16,158 contacts using that rig. And that's, that's, that's all been portable uh, at, at 100 watts or less. So uh, as you can tell, maybe you can sense some enthusiasm on my part. I, 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 I truly love doing this. Uh, from the award standpoint, this is, this is the first award people typically receive. Uh, this is you answered 10 CODA CQs and they've submitted their logs. This is automatically generated from you for you. So it starts uh, with a 10 Hunter bronze certificate and goes up from there. Where I am now, uh, just to show you the other kinds of awards, this is one you get for, uh, I've activated 400, over 400 unique, and I've worked uh, over 800 unique. So the, the awards are pretty. They, they've generated, you print them off yourself. Some people print them all, some people don't. Um, just different types. The Haley Jacquet Wildlife Management Area that I showed earlier in College Grove, uh, the Oasis Award here, I, I, I've done that one at least 10 QSOs from the same parks on the area entity more than 20 times. So Oasis is, is a level of award that a lot of people go for. They go to the same park over and over. And it's amazing. You combine that one and the Kilo award up here, I've, I've made over a thousand contacts from, from that park. But every time I go, there'll always be at least one ham that will say, thanks for the new one. Uh, so, and, and it doesn't matter uh, because people want to work it. People get the Oasis Award as hunters also for working this park 20 times. So uh, there's, just, there's just lots of different ways to get interested. Park to park is something that's always fun. I'll, I'm sitting in a park, another guy sitting in a park, and we talk to each other. And so I've got uh, a little over, I've got over a thousand of those. And, and some of the operators have uh, carried KB3WAV in Maryland. She is kind of the goddess of this. And, She's over 3,000, I think, park to park and, and over 1,500 actual activation. She's a, she's a beast. So resources, um, parks on the air again. I, I, I said that earlier. And you got poda.us and the Facebook page. You know, please check them out, even if you're not interested, because you may find something that interests you. Uh, if you don't like portable operations and you just want to make contacts, there's, there's certainly opportunities if you watch the spotting page. If you do like portable operations, I, I don't see how you can find anything, in my opinion, that, that's any better on an ongoing basis uh, to keep your steel sharp and just to have a lot of fun. Let's see. Okay, so I'm done with that. I, I'll pause and see if there are any questions about the program. 
and then we will uh, turn it to the video. Hey, Tom. <clears throat> yes. This is Jeff. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for doing the presentation this morning. It's very good. And uh, it's like Tom said, when I got involved with Parks on the Air, I was just uh, tuning around the precinct one day, and I heard this guy calling CQ Poda, and I answered him. And then I found another one. And after that, I started uh, doing the investigation, and that's how I found it. And I tell you, uh, you, you do get the bug after you've worked a few of them to get out there and uh, uh, do the activating on your own and – I've done some on my own and Bill has done some on his own. Then we've done some together. And I tell you what, it's just a, a, a great way to spend a day. And I have made a lot of friends on POTA that, uh, like Tom said, you'll see them. You say, hey, good morning, Claude or whoever. And uh, good to work you today. Glad you're out there. And it, it's just a good way to make friends. So uh, thank you, Tom. And uh, I guess we can watch the video. Welcome everybody to our Parks on the Air station here. We're located out on the Natchez Trace and uh, th today we're actually doing uh, three parks, the Natchez Trace Parkway, uh, the well, Natchez Trace Scenic Trail uh, and the Trail of Tears uh, all run through this location. So uh, for my antenna I'm running uh, the Soda Beam uh, band hopper antenna and I've got it set up for 40 meters right now. Uh, for the station, I'm running the KX3 into the uh, KPSA 100 amp. Yeah, we're not quite doing QRP today, so we are running 100 amps. Uh, so the signals look strong. I hope we have a great day making a lot of contacts on the, on, uh, the POTA. So please, I uh, hope you're enjoying the video. All right, thank you for South Dakota. I've got you a uh, five six five six into the park today. Uh, thanks a lot for the activation. Uh, okay, it's beginning to rain here. I think we're going to throw up a shelter real quick. Uh, I'm sorry about that. We'll be back as soon as we can. We're going to throw up a shelter and get out of the rain. Uh, we'll be back. QSL to South Carolina, and thanks for being there. Whiskey Bravo 5, Whiskey Alpha Juliet, QRZ. Kilo November 4, Lima Charlie X-Ray. Kilo November 4, Lima Charlie X-Ray, 5-9 into Tennessee in the three parks. Go ahead. Roger, roger. You're 5-9 into Western North Carolina. Can you rattle off the three parks again for me, please? Uh, roger. That is K0642-4560. And three seven nine one QSL. <clears throat> roger, Roger. I got him. Seventy three, and have a good day. Don't get too wet. Uh, we'll try not to. Seventy three, and uh, uh, happy Veterans Day to everyone. Uh, Whiskey Bravo Five, Whiskey Alpha Juliet, uh, QRZ. Whiskey Echo Nine, Echo Bravo Nine, Fox Trot, India, November. Uh, there was a Whiskey Echo Nine station. Go ahead. Whiskey Echo 9, Echo, Echo. Whiskey Echo 9, Echo, Echo. 5-9 into Tennessee in the three parks. Go ahead. Here's 5-9 in Illinois. Over. Uh, thank you for the Illinois. 73 in the station entering Foxtrot, India, Lima. Go ahead. Kilo Bravo 9, Foxtrot, India, November. Roger. F uh, Kilo Bravo 9, Foxtrot, India, November. You're also 5-9 into the three parks in Tennessee. Go ahead. You are 5-9 into Illinois, India, Lima, and thanks for the trifecta. Roger. Thank you for being there and helping us. Uh, this is Whiskey Bravo 5, Whiskey Alpha Juliet, calling CQ Parks on the Air. CQ, CQ Poda, CQ Poda, CQ Parks on the Air, CQ Parks on the Air. Whiskey Bravo 5, Whiskey Alpha Juliet, calling CQ. 
Kilo Kilo 4, Sierra Mike Mike. Kilo Kilo 4, Sierra Mike Mike, a 5 9 into Tennessee in the three Roger, parts. Go Roger, ahead. Four, four, Roger, Roger, Roger. Thanks for that 5 9 or 5 9 into Jacksonville, Florida. Great signal, 73. Uh, 73, great signal out of Florida also Thank for you. you. Sir. Happy uh, QRZ. This is Kilo park to Park, eight, eight, four, you uh, Let me pick up the park to park to park to park. Go ahead. Kilo, Juliet 4, Uniform Lima, you're 5959 five, into park number 1998. 1998. Over. Uh, Roger. Uh, uh, Paul, I QSL the 59. You're also a 59 uh, into the three park. Do you have the park numbers? Go ahead. Uh, no, I don't. Go ahead and give me the park numbers. Okay. The first one is 0642. 4560 and 3791. QSL? Okay, 0642, 4560, and 3790. What was the last one? Uh, 3791, number one. Roger, Roger. Uh, give me your call, please. Whiskey Bravo 5, Whiskey Alpha Juliet. Whiskey Bravo 5, Whiskey Alpha Juliet. Very good. Okay, 73, and thanks for the park to park. Uh, QRZ. CQ parks on the air, CQ parks on the air. This is Kilo for the air. The Delta X ray station, go again. Uh, stand by. Uh, okay, the computer's going dead. Uh, give me your call again. CQ parks on the air. CQ uh, Kilo, Kilo, Kilo 2 air. station. Kilo 4, Charlie Oscar, Mike on. CQ parks Kilo on the air. Kilo 2, Delta X-ray. Okay, Kilo, Kilo 2, Delta X-ray. You are a 5252 five, five, into uh, Tennessee in the three parks. QSL. Oscar, Mike, CQ parks on the air. 5555, New York, USL. Thanks for New York. Uh, this is Whiskey Bravo 5, Whiskey Alpha Juliet to QRZ. Uh, the station ending in Quebec. Kilo 9, Bravo, Bravo, Quebec, over. Okay, Kilo 9, Bravo, Bravo, Quebec. Uh, you are 5959 into the three parks in Tennessee, QSL. QSL, QSL, you're also 5-5, five, 5-5, five, five, yeah, five, Illinois, thank you. Four, Charlie, Oscar, Mike. Uh, thank you very much for the 5-5, uh, QRZ. QSL. Victor, Bravo. Uh, there's a Whiskey Zero station, go ahead. Whiskey Zero, Lima, Mike, Uniform. Uh, Whiskey Zero, Lima, Mike, Uniform, 5-9 into Tennessee in the three parts, go ahead. We're a bad man in the state of Iowa, QSL. Hi, QSL, the Iowa, thanks very much. Uh, this is Whiskey Bravo 5, Whiskey Alpha Juliet, QRZ. Uh, the Uniform Papa Station, go ahead. Uh, you are 5 9 into Tennessee in the three parks. Uh, QSL? Uh, QSL, 5 5 in Indiana. IQSL the 5 5 in Indiana. Thanks for being there. QRZ? Uh, the station ending in Bravo. November 9, Romeo Victor Bravo. Uh, November 9, Romeo Victor Bravo. 5 9 into the three parks in Tennessee. Go ahead. Roger, thank you. I got you about 5 6, Indiana. 5 6, Indiana. Uh, thanks for the activation and have a great time out there. 7 3. Uh, 7 3, but just stop raining on us. Uh, Whiskey Bravo 5, Whiskey Alpha Juliet. QRZ? Uh, one more time, QRZ. Kilo X ray 5 Mike. Uh, kilo X ray 5 Mike. Uh, 5 8, 5 8 into the three parks in Tennessee. QSL? Roger, Roger. 5 9, Mr. Debbie. Good luck. Thank you very much. Uh, 7 3. QRZ? Alpha Alpha 8. Alpha 5. Uh, was there an Alpha Alpha 8? Uh, Alpha 8. Golf Papa. Okay, I missed the first. I got the Golf Papa. What's the rest of the call? Alpha Alpha 8. Golf Papa. Roger. You're 5 9 into the three parks in Tennessee. QSL? Uh, QSL. You're also 5 9 into Ohio. Thanks for Ohio. 73. QRZ? Whiskey Charlie. 
Charlie 8 Lima. Whiskey Charlie 8 Lima, 5-9 into Three Parks, Tennessee. QSL? Uh, Roger, K uh, Kilo Delta 2 Sierra X-Ray Delta, yep, uh, QSL. And do you have the three park numbers? Go ahead. Uh, I got 0642, 0642, QSL. Uh, QSL, and there's two other numbers. Uh, also 4560 and 3791, QSL. Thanks for activating the three parks. 73. Uh, 73, and thanks for being there. Uh, there's an Alpha Germany 4 station. Go ahead. I've got the Alpha Germany 4 Lima, and that's all I got. Let's try that again, please. All right, QSL the 55 North Carolina. You are a 3333 into Tennessee. QSL? QSL 73. 73, and thanks for the parks. Uh, QRZ, this is Whiskey Bravo 5, Whiskey Alpha Juliet. Kilo Charlie 3, Kilo Juliet, Quebec. Uh, Kilo Charlie 3, uh, Kilo. Juliet, Quebec, 5-9 uh, into Tennessee into three parks. Go ahead. Roger, Roger. Thanks for three parks. Uh, you are a 5-7 into uh, Garrett County, Maryland. All right. First mail of the day. Thank you very much, sir. 7-3. Uh, 73. 73. Alpha, Alpha, Juliet, 3, Oscar, I believe it was. Go ahead. Roger, Roger. You're 5-5. Uh, thank you, First Pennsylvania. You are a five, a five also. Five, five into Tennessee to three parks. Thank you. Roger, Roger. Thanks for being there. Thanks for the and Good luck. Seven three. Uh, seven three. QRZ. Four, 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 well, KC four LRR. How are you, RJ? I've got you. I've got you about a four 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 into the park. Go ahead. IQSL, QSL, thanks for finding us. Okay, thanks a lot for RJ. Uh, Whiskey Bravo 5, Whiskey Alpha Juliet, CQ POTA. Okay, uh, QSL the 5 2 from Massachusetts, uh, 7 3, thanks a lot. Uh, QRZ, Whiskey Bravo 5, Whiskey Alpha Juliet. Okay. No, apparently not. Ah, <laughs> uh, I took the headphones off. Station calling, uh, WB5WAJ. I think that's it, and uh, I, I thanks Jeff and, and Bill for the your work on that, and uh, I think it showed some of the challenges that you can face. Uh, if everything went smoothly, it wouldn't be nearly as much fun, maybe sometimes. But you know, they they endured weather, they endured equipment failure, persevered. Um, sometimes they go smooth, sometimes they don't. But uh, happy to take any more questions or otherwise, uh, Ed. Uh, Send it back to you. Yeah, Tom, look in the chat. There's several questions that hadn't been answered yet towards the bottom that you might want to address. Okay, let me look here. Do -do -do -do. Okay. Florida swimming pools on the air count. No. I can get, I can get that one pretty quick. We've had dog Go on down on past, Go on past him. <laughs> Somebody asked about dog parks too. Um, are special permissions ever needed? Uh, the only place that really ever run into an issue are in uh, national wildlife refuges. Uh, those guys are very, very particular. 
Uh, only once have I been turned down. Uh, what you'll find is if you if you ask someone that is a, that is acting in like a concessionaire role, you know, they're just taking up money or, or that kind of thing. They don't know the rules and they will generally d d default to, yeah, you need a permit for this. Uh, if you can talk to an actual ranger and tell them what you're doing, they're generally very interested, actually. And and most of the times we'll show you good places where you can get away from people or, or good high spots and, and that type of thing. But, um, you know, national forest, state forest, for example, there's, there's people aren't around um, to, to ask. So most of the time we'll just try to find a place that's public and, um, up, you know, on, on, on the out of the way, if you will, and set up. And depending on your footprint and what you're wanting to do, that can change the answer. My station, no, to do what Bill and Jeff were doing uh, might draw more attention. So, you know, that's a long answer to that. Uh, if you're ever in doubt, if you're just going to sit in the truck and do ham sticks, no. Uh, if you want to get out and set up a tent and that kind of thing, you might want to ask. Uh, let's see. You do if you want to activate. No, you don't have to pre-register, uh, but you you want to. I mean, I think you'd want to do this, um, and it. But you don't have to pre-register. You uh, if you actually activated a park. If if you had operated from uh, a national park during 2016, for example, and weren't even part of the program, you just like to do it. You can submit that log now. There, there's no deadlines and date restrictions, that kind of thing. If you've ever operated and got 10 contacts from a national park, for example, you can submit that log to the mapping coordinator or the logging coordinator for, for, the, uh, for your region and you'd get credit for it. Hope that answers that. Um, I use on the logging, I use AC log um, on a Surface Pro, but I also have a backup paper uh, spread, little spreadsheet uh, form that I built and uh, that I've got on a clipboard that I use sometimes in an emergency. It didn't used to be so hard to transfer it back to uh, into the computer when it was tougher to get contacts. You get 12 or 15. It doesn't take that long. You do something like Jeff did a while ago and you get 180 something. You'll spend a lot of time if you get home and now you're trying to transfer that into your into your computer log. But you just have to figure out what what works best for you and your, and your operating setup. I typically, when I'm doing it on AC log, as soon as I finish an activation, I uh, export the file to a, a thumb drive so that in case my, my Surface Pro doesn't boot up at the next park, I, I have saved that information. Uh, let's see. Hmm. How am I powering my computer? I'm not sure what that in in the field i'm not uh I, I do have a inverter in my truck so i can charge it if that's what we're talking about is keeping the computer going uh, they were using a generator um and battery power uh, at the, on the video carton is not a part because i think that is a city of franklin thing isn't it i don't think that's a state or federally owned piece of property that's that's the rule um, explaining the three parks at one location. It takes research um, to know where, it's, especially these trails, if, as long as you, if you're dealing with a trail, for example, the, um, uh, the Trail of Tears, you have to be within 100 feet of where the actual trail was and, and the original route of the Trail of Tears is marked pretty well on highway signs. You also have to be on federal or state owned property. You can't be in your own driveway just because you live adjacent to uh, the Trail of Tears, for example. So the location where they were, the Natchez Trace Parkway and the Natchez Trace Historic Trail are pretty well parallel up through there. And the Trail of Tears, I guess, crossed it. Um, and so uh, they, they had a location that, that had just worked. There are actually some uh, fifers, they call them. They, this is a threefer. Uh, that they did. I think you get up in the Washington, D.C. area uh, on the Capitol uh, in the, the mall area there, and there's a lot of overlap as well. Um, 
I know the Stones River National Battlefield here in Murfreesboro is one of my favorite spots to go and set up. And the Trail of Tears runs down Old Nashville Highway. So if I get in the right spot on the battlefield, I can I can do both of those at one time. If I'm more than 100 feet off the road, though, I can only claim it as the um, as the battlefield. So if someone comes up and asks what you're doing, uh, it's a gr- that happens a lot, and it's a great opportunity to introduce people to ham radio, and just in general, and. I usually approach it from the emergency communication preparation standpoint. People may not understand it, but I think it, um, you know, it, it resonates. You, you know, you talk about the hurricanes and different things and how communications can go out and, and how sometimes we are the people that have to get messages and information in and out of areas. And it's a, this is just a way for us to keep our skills sharp and, and to experience the park and, you know, and, and try to, Try to introduce them to the to the uh, important the service aspects of the hobby as well, and they're fascinated. Typically, if um, you know you let them listen for a little bit, I've had park rangers. I went to the Chief Van House historic site in Georgia not long ago, and and went in and talked to the ranger, and it was a very nice lady, and uh, she had seen somebody uh, do that before, but they didn't come in and ask, and she was wondering what it was about. She came out and took pictures. She listened. She asked questions. She said she was going to put it on the social media site. She was just excited about it. So um, it's a lot of times, those, most of the time, 98% of the time, those conversations are very, very positive. Um, so I think I'm to the end of the questions there. Ed. Okay. Has anybody else got a question or a comment for Tom or for Bill or Jeff? All right. Well, I want to thank you all. Thank you for a great presentation. Go go ahead. One other thing. If someone is interested in doing an activation and going, certainly, you know, I I think I'm not going to speak for Jeff and Bill. They they probably would welcome a visitor, but, but I would certainly be happy to, to uh, do a joint activation with somebody to show them how to kind of get started. So. Oh, absolutely. That's one thing we wanted to bring this to uh, everyone's attention. Uh, is to perhaps get more WKRs people involved in parks on the air. So, yes, please get in contact with us. Maybe when it warms up some a little bit. As soon as the weather warms up a little bit, I'm going to take my 705 and uh, my infed, uh, my antenna's antenna, and I'll set up out there with you. But got to get a little warmer for me. All right, guys, thank you for a great presentation. I really enjoyed it.